Welcome back. So we went, we just went over the timing covers and what differences they have and how they kind of matter to what motor you're building. Um, well, now we're going to go over the oil pans. The oil pans, there's not a whole lot of difference between most of them, but there is one major difference and it really comes down to when you're building a stroker motor. Because when you build a stroker motor, your the actual crank will be going further to the left and the right and a little deeper and because of that it needs a little bit more clearance within the block sometimes and also obviously in your oil pan. So, um, the main oil pans you have are your steel oil pans, which by its nature is steel, um, and your aluminum oil pans, which as you can see, aluminum. Um, the aluminum pans have, will have a ridge here to help seal the gasket to the block, whereas your steel pans have what is indate, uh, indentation in the middle and they try to seal on the outside because they both kind of tend to leak a little bit, depends on how you do it. The one, the one solution for a leaky oil pan is you got to get them through Europe and uh, I believe uh, local GP source does carry in sometimes and it's a single piece oil pan that was designed for the uh, diesels. Those work really well and they almost always seal up. The real key in both cases is don't over tighten and use some lock tight when you tighten down, but we'll get to that later when I'm building the motor. Um, so the other thing that you'll notice is that basically a steel pan is thinner and uh, basically around two millimeters thick and the aluminum pan as you can see is about more like four millimeters thick. It's a, it's a substantial thickness and also what you'll find is interesting is that with the steel pan the aluminum pan slides right in. As you can see it's like there's basically that's how much extra clearance you have. You have the difference between that hole and that one there, as you can see, there's a, there's a good substantial difference. And a, approximately about half a quart of oil difference, I believe. Um, but yeah, so th those are the big differences. And with those differences on the motors comes the differences in your pickup tubes. You'll have ones for the steel and ones for the aluminum. And basically, as you can see, um, and I'll show this when we build the motor, is that long story short, is that one's gonna clear the crank easily and one is not. And uh, it's gonna be easier to show on the motor later. So I'll show you that. Um, and uh, one other thing is, with the steel pans, and you can weld, if you weld the aluminum, you can do that as well, but uh, they made this, which basically, this is not a factory one, this is a homemade one. Um, I, I didn't make it, but it it's, was in my collection, so I figured I'd show it to you. It's basically, it's a hammerhead, and it's gonna have an extra opening here to increase oil volume. And also it's going to have the baffles that you can see right here to allow the oil to kind of like not load up on one side in a racing situation. This is not something you would normally see on any car. Um, this is for something that's going to be definitely be, you know, doing a hill climb or autocross or something like that where you're going to be doing a lot of turns and you don't want to starve your motor of oil. Um, this is of the aluminum pans as well because there are differences and they t depend on a couple of different things, one year, uh, the year, model, and make. And uh, for us that would be Cadet B, GT, and Manta A in the Inc. because that's what we had in the United States to work with. Um, so primarily, your first oil pan is going to be from approximately 68 to 72. And that is going to be this, this pan, uh, it's a standard aluminum oil pan with a dipstick tube built into the side. And this is going to be on your cadets, and it's going to be on your GTs up to around 72. Uh, I believe 72 was a change every year. Um, now, in 72, uh, they, put a, they they did not drill out the boss, and they didn't put the dipstick tube in here because they changed to put the dipstick tube in the block. Why? It's anybody's guess. But in 72, this is when this oil pan shows up. And it's primarily on the GT and the uh, Manta. You won't find, you shouldn't find this on a cadet because cadets, they quit making cadets in 71. Or at least they quit importing cadets in 71 for the United States. So that's the two big differences. The third difference is for the 71 to early 72 Manta. Uh, those came with these thin pans, which everybody likes. They fit really well on cadets. On GTs, there's some debate as to how well they fit and if you have to modify them. Um, I've been told they do, I've been told they don't. I've not tried it myself, so I can't, I can't honestly say. Um, but they do basically reinforce the uh, pan and it does help cool the oil uh, uh, to a bit, which on a GT probably wouldn't hurt. So that's the primary difference with this one. So 
And then that's when in early, seven, uh, in sometime late 72, that's when the steel pans came out to be. And then these are basically the, the standard pan for our, all our motors in the United States from 70, from 72 until 75. So there you go. Those are the primary differences. And uh, anyway, so now we'll go to the valve covers. Now the valve covers. Um, on, the valve covers are pretty basic and straightforward. Um, this is a standard oil, uh, standard valve cover you would see on your um, cadets and mantas. Um, this would be the vacuum connection goes in here, and then that would be the port to your air cleaner. Um, and basically, uh, they, they're steel. They like to leak um, a lot. And uh, you got little dimples here that are meant to go in the oil because we have different. Um, about, we, there's different. Uh, gaskets to go with them too. And as you see on this one, the hole lines up with the hole there. And that was supposed to help it try to seal it, but it never really quite works. And also you're supposed to have these little tabs are supposed to go into there. And to be honest, not a lot of people try to use these anymore because they mentioned they leak. Um, so now on the 75, there is one difference. On the 75, there's a, a piece welded here because you got the fuel injection in 75, and there's a piece on the fuel injected models that I have here for the cable to be both the cable to go into, but there's nothing functionally different than that. And also in this case, all the uh, all your wonderful little um, vent material, as you can see in here, there's a little bit of material there to capture all the oil and make sure it drops down in there. These are kind of like you got a bend and tab; they're not they're not easy to replace. Um, which gets us to the GT valve cover. Uh, this one's very popular in the United States because we had a lot of them. So almost every car that anybody's restored now can usually find a GT valve cover around there somewhere and they replace their valve covers with GT valve covers. And again, vacuum port and then the uh, connection to your air cleaner um, where it's supposed to feed the fumes in. Now the difference with this valve cover is that this one, because it is the only valve cover that has a flat bottom, which of course you can make, assume leaks, which they do, just like the other ones, just a little worse, and not, not, not so much bigger. Now, their gaskets, if you can find the originals, have a smaller hole. Now, I like using the ones with the smaller holes on the bigger gaskets because then you get a double seal on them, and it works a little bit better that way. Now. And also on the GT valve cover, you have this cover that can come off real easy, just a couple bolts, and then inside there are these are your little pads to get, that get oil soaked and they fall apart. Um, they look like steel wool, but don't replace them with steel wool. That will destroy it. More motor can destroy that way than I can carry count. Um, you can use like a, a copper scrubby. Uh, those will work real well. Um, and I believe the uh, Gill and Todd probably have the uh, have the other other ones there. Um, now you'll notice the 2.2 valve covers and the 2.4 valve. Covers. These look identical, do they not? Well, they're not. Um, you go inside, the 2.4 really tries to do a much better job of capturing all the oil before it vents, whereas the 2.4 eh, doesn't really pay a whole lot of attention to it. And this one also has media. This one I have not seen any media in these. I think this one tries to do it without media, which is probably why the longer stroke. The other thing that's different is that, like the 75 oil can, the 75 valve cover, um, still on oil pans on my head. The uh, it also has a hole that lines up with the gasket. Now in this case, it works well. It works a little bit better. Um, and I have a feeling part of that might be is the the uh, the older Manta ones and Cadet ones and everything else. Those may have a bigger hole. Uh, a little it may not be as small as this one. And all these gaskets are made for 2.2 and 2 liter valve covers. Um, and again, what the funny thing is, is that the steel is early, aluminum is late, versus the difference we saw in the oil pans. Um, now, on the 2.4, with its valve cover, gasket, it looks like this. And notice it's got a gasket and a channel and these big holes. So it goes on like that. And I tend to put a little bit of a Gorilla Glue or snot in there to hold it in. And that is to really give it a nice, fresh push down. Because this one, as you notice, like the GT one, is flat. And that's what they try to do this time. 
the other difference on the 2.4 ones, which does make them a little much of a pain to get to, is that there are some mushrooms that go in here. And I'll show you those here right now. So, these are, are the mushroom, as we call it. I'm not sure you see it right there. There's a mushroom and a cap. And you've probably seen these on a couple of uh, videos. Not videos, but a couple of my pictures of my motors where I've, I've painted these caps that go on top of the mushroom. And basically, it's, they, they kind of form that, and then you got the bolt that goes through them. And then they slide in here into the, uh, into the valve cover. And then as you compress, it stops as soon as that metal hits. So it's supposed to be perfect as far as getting your torque right to your, your valve cover. Um, I still highly recommend, no matter which way you go, to uh, use the, um, to still use the torque wrench. Uh, it, it, that's still gonna be your best bet on the oil pans or the valve covers. The real key, again, is a little bit of Loctite and tightening them down until they're tight and firm, but not too firm. And then going back later, and if you're leaking a little bit, tightening them just a little bit more, but making sure you try to stay in a nice, even pattern, and you use a torque wrench. Don't go by, it feels about this way. You'd be surprised. It makes, it makes a difference, and you might not be able to feel it. In some cases, you're gonna think that you're not tightening it enough, so you're over tightening, that's typically why your valve covers and your oil pans leak. So, anyway. That is it for this video, and I appreciate it if you would please subscribe and uh, you know give me a thumbs up if you like the video or not. I, it's your prerogative. Uh, but yeah, and hopefully the next one, the next video, we'll uh, we'll start assembling the motor.